What's up guys, I'm Mr. Audio, and if you're new here, welcome to the channel. On this channel we talk about music production, sound design, mixing, mastering, and pretty much anything to get your tracks ready for release. If that sounds like something you're interested in, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss another video. I do, two a week. That being said, let's get right into the video. Alright, so these are the 10 biggest reasons why I love Ableton over all other DAWs. First is the audio effect rack. Alright, you can string plugins together, effects change, parallel chains, infinitely, and just keep grouping different plugins together pretty much however you see fit. This creates infinite possibilities to create your own effects chains, plugins, map multiple parameters to multiple macro controls, and you can even group entire effects chains within those audio effect racks. Here, let me show you. So not only can you group different plugins like this, like see these three here that I've got? I can just hit Command G and group those together. I grouped an audio effect rack with a couple other stock plugins. We'll undo that. Now I can also group these three effects chains together by just hitting Command G. And boom, the parameters that you mapped to the controls will still be mapped, but you will have to change back the parameters to the ones you originally specified. And that's not all the auto effect rack can do. You can also string third party plugins together and map different parameters of those plugins to the macro controls of the audio effect rack. So you can create infinite possibilities with this audio effect rack. Now, number two, did you know that you could oversample plugins in Ableton? That's right, you heard it. You can oversample plugins, I'll show you. So in order to oversample plugins, you have to know which ones you can oversample. There are four that I know of, and then there are the reverbs. All reverbs have three settings, like this. Eco, mid, and high. The saturator and the dynamic tube both have a high quality setting. The glue compressor has an oversampling setting, and so does the EQ8. This helps with EQ cramping, aliasing, pretty much anything you're gonna use a glue compressor or EQs for. Now, the saturator has high quality mode. I'm assuming that's also oversampling because, well, that's what you need that for. And the dynamic tube as well. Now, reverb, they have three different settings, high quality, mid, and eco, for different grades of CPU usage. All right, now if you're trying to use the high quality reverb, you can just print the reverb and then delete the plugin altogether and just mess with that audio of the reverb. Number three is a new feature in Ableton 11 standard, because that's what I have. I'm pretty sure it was in the suite version of 10, but I'm not positive because I have the standard version. It's the envelope follower, all right? Now this is what compressors use to see the audio waveform as it's going by. Now the envelope follower can be used on many different scenarios. It's exactly how I created the dynamic sidechain EQ and my one band dynamic EQ. All right, these are fundamental tools in creating plugins. So this is a game changer if you're into making your own effects. Number four, right clicking on automation to enter a value. Have you ever been stuck trying to figure out I can't get it to the exact value that I want? Dragging up, dragging down, never quite getting the exact value that you want. Well. Let me show you a little secret here. I can just go like this, right click, and add value. Number five is infinite groups. You can just group a bunch of tracks and then group that group and then keep grouping the groups to your heart's content. It literally doesn't matter how many groups you group together. You don't even have to route the tracks inside the group to that group that you group them in. You could just use it as a way to keep them organized in a file folder. I do this all the time in productions. This isn't really a secret, it's just a great useful shortcut that I like to use. Command comma will bring up your preferences at any time. Just hit it and you'll be amazed. <laughs> I use it all the time in productions and I can just hit command comma and boom, I can change my settings the way I like to. Now, have you ever been trying to find the correct setting on a plugin in Ableton? Let me show you how to fine tune. All right, so you can just hit shift and it'll go up in slower increments. Now let, watch when I let go of shift. See, I've got way more control over it now if I hold shift. 
the values change slower. So holding shift to fine tune anything in Ableton is a great tool as well. All right, this is a cool trick that I use to unmask frequencies if I'm using stock plugins. Personally, I use Isotope and I did a video on how to create depth in your mixes using the inverse link function in Isotope. I'll link it up here. And you can do the same thing with Ableton's EQ8. All right, so this negative scale function here. So like, let's say I boost on this track right here, right? Well, I can just copy and paste this onto another track. Let's just say here. And now we're gonna negatively affect the scale by 100 as well. Boom, just like that, you have inverse linked this EQ. I mean, it's a little bit more complicated than that and you had to use two different EQs to do so and you can't control it, but you just took that EQ, copied it and then inversed the scale. This is a trick that I use all the time. It is incredible. All right, this is a new feature in Ableton 11. It's the ability to save templates. I would actually have to save sessions before as templates and date them so I knew what plugins were actually in them and what settings and how I had it set up basically. Now Ableton's got a function right in there. You can just hit file and then save as template. You can also save this as a default set. Also, on the lines of saving templates, you can also save default settings for your plugins by just right clicking and save as default. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing this for all your plugins. I would recommend just leaving them as is and if you use that setting a lot, maybe save a macro version of it. And the last thing that I love about Ableton is the fact that you can bring anything in from your computer to the project by just searching in the explore bar up here in Ableton. You can just type anything and it will find it in your audio effect racks, anything. So just click where you want to search and it will search that for that. Current project. Boom. See, Ableton is an amazing digital audio workstation. If you know some cool things about Ableton that I didn't list here, leave them down in the comments. I'm sure everybody would love to see them. Well, that's it for this video, guys. If you stuck around to the end and you're an Ableton user, I got some free stuff on my website. Links are in the description. There's also some paid products there as well. If you have any troubles, feel free to contact me. I'm an open book. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Mr. Audio, out.